Oh my god. Wait, let me just fix this using... Oh, come on. Okay, so it seems that I'm in dire need of a comp. So let's use Fusion to model one and then 3D print it for ourselves. The first thing we're gonna do is to create a 2D sketch. And to do that we're gonna go up and we're gonna select Create Sketch. And to create a sketch we're gonna select one of the first uh, planes here, the origin planes. We're gonna select the top plane. Now we're gonna go ahead and select the line tool here to start designing our uh, comp. And a good tip for uh, taking ideas into the 3D modeling workspace is to, first of all, sit down with pen and paper and sketch out your uh, idea from multiple angles. This way, when you get to the creating uh, 2D sketch stage here, you already know how this product is going to look. I have already done this, so I have an approximate idea of how this comp is going to look. And uh, I want the bottom of the comp to be a straight line that goes down like this. For now, let's not worry about the dimensions and just place them uh, later. Okay, this looks pretty good as the bottom. And we can see that it's gonna snap into a horizontal line there, which is uh, fine in this case. So I'm gonna let it do that and press once more to create that line. Now, we are able to continue and creating lines here. And I'm gonna do just that. So I want one long uh, line at the back of the comp to go like this and we see that it wants to snap uh, to this line 90 degrees and uh, again this is something we actually want so we're gonna let it do that and we're gonna click once more there okay cool now let's finish this up and uh, go back now for the handle I would like it to be slightly stylish so I want it to not be a simple square and go like this but instead I want it to be an arc, so that it has a little flair to it. Uh, to create an arc, we can press on create here, then we go down to arc, and then we see different ways of creating a 2D sketch arc. And in our case, the three point arc tool is the simplest one, and uh, in general it's also the one you're gonna be using most. So with the tool selected, let's select the starting point of our arc, and again, if you're uncertain about what to do next, you can just stop moving the mouse for a second. And Fusion 360 is gonna show you a little tip there. So place starting point. We're gonna have the starting point right here. So we click that. Then we move the mouse to the end point, which can be around here. And again, we're gonna set out all of the dimensions later. For now, we just want a basic uh, geometry that looks good. We place the end point here. And now we can select the curvature, so we can have the handle go out like this a little bit, or as I was thinking, we can have it go inwards, so something like that. And we click a third time, and then uh, we have an arc. Now this is the handle, and from here we want to go ahead and create the front of the comp. As we know, the comp is going to have many spikes to uh, go through our hair, but it's going to be a bit of a... Uh, tedious exercise to create them one by one so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the pattern tool uh, but we're gonna do that later so for now let's just create a space where all of these T's of the comp are gonna go so again we select the line tool we go from the top of the comp up a little bit like this we let it snap 90 degrees then we create the whole space where the T's of the comp are gonna go we move it here and uh, we place the line, uh, let's place it right here. Okay, cool. And uh, we don't want to place another line now, so we press the check mark, or we just uh, press the exit mark, uh, or rather exit button right there. Now, as you see, this line is a little bit crooked here, so let's uh, place a constraint on it. We're gonna move up to the constraints menu here. We're gonna select vertical horizontal constraint right there. And then we're gonna click on the line to make it straight. Uh, okay, and from here, how do we connect this to this point? Uh, my idea is to have one more straight line go down, so we click the line tool and then we place one line that goes down like this, uh, perfectly vertical. And to connect it to this one, uh, I want it to be somewhat of a rounded corner, so I'm not gonna make a straight line like that, instead I'm gonna exit by pressing escape. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the arc tool again by clicking create, going down to arc, and then selecting the three-point arc here. 
the starting point of the arc is going to be this point right here and the end point is going to be right there and then the curvature of the line uh, can be for now like that it doesn't really matter now if we zoom in by using the scroll wheel a little bit on this point we see that this is a bit of a weird corner right it doesn't go tangential to these straight lines so to fix that we're going to again go to the constraint menu we're going to select the tangent tool here then we're going to select the straight line and then the arc and then again the straight line and then the arc zooming out a little bit again we get a nice overview over the sketch here so now we have the handle here in the back and then we have this empty space where the T's will come in later at the front and uh, now let's actually go ahead and put some dimensions on this so we're gonna go ahead and select the dimensions tool and start off by defining the length of the handle and here it is very useful to have a caliper at your desk so a caliper is a tool that you can use to get a basic sense of how large things should be because when you work in a 3d space you can very quickly lose track i have no idea if this thing is in meters if it's in millimeters or if i'm working with something at the nanoscale here so i need uh, some kind of reference now use your caliper or a measuring band uh, for your hand and place a dimension here for the length of the handle that fits your hand pretty well in my case that's gonna be 90 millimeters like that cool now the next dimension we're gonna place is this one it is the thickness of the back of the uh, toothed line of the comb uh, in my case i want this to be a pretty strong comb so i'm gonna go ahead and select something fairly thick like uh, six millimeters there like that and again we want to have a length for this part so we select this line all the time using the dimension tool right here and then we select this line to create the length of the uh, teased part of the comb and uh, for simplicity let's make it the same as the handle so 90 millimeters and now we can see that it's still far from defined because all of the lines are still in blue right when we have a defined sketch they become black so we're going to work uh, and put down dimensions until we get something that is fully defined where all lines are in black. So what dimensions don't we have here? We don't have the radius for this one. Uh, here is just going to need to be something that looks pretty well. So let's put down 130 there. We don't have this line here. How thick is the handle? Mm, let's make it uh, around what it is now. I mean, this already looks pretty good. So we just put down the dimensions that make it uh, look more or less the same here. And the reason for why we even put down dimensions is so that we can later, if we are unhappy, quickly change the dimensions. Because this is the beauty of parametric design. At any point in the future, we can go back and changing one value, we will completely modify how the final model looks. So if we would have kept everything in blue here, uh, modifying the design would become a huge hassle. So continue with that. We're going to place this radius right here for this little corner. And let's make it four millimeters uh, and as we st see uh, it's almost fully defined now but for some reason it's all in blue still right and that is because we can still move the sketch around so if i exit the dimension tool by pressing escape and then grab one of the corners here i see that i can still drag it around freely and uh, to stop this we can go to the constraints panel we select a coincident constraint right there and then we lock all of this to the origin point here and we do that by selecting one of the corners doesn't really matter which one and then we select the origin point which will lock the sketch cool and by pressing the scroll wheel we can pan a little bit so that the sketch is still centered and now we see it's in blue here why is this line blue to find out we again go to escape and then we just try to pull around a little bit on the sketch we try grabbing this corner and move it around okay now it's pretty clear what's happening here uh, this line right here has not been defined uh, and we could simply go ahead and select the uh, dimension tool right here and place one more dimension and the sketch would be fully defined but in this case i actually want this line to be perfectly aligned with this one in height 
And there is a couple of ways to do this, but I think the simplest one to remember is to select the line tool here and then place a supporting line that goes from this point to this point. Now, this line is not part of the main sketch. It's really there for helping us constrain the sketch. So what we're going to do is to press escape to exit the tool. And then we're going to select the line and make it a construction line by going to the sketch palette and pressing construction. And now we can see that the line became dotted and also the profile here that was enclosed before in orange uh, has disappeared. And what this really signifies to us is that this is a helping line. It's not really part of the main sketch. The way we're going to use this line is to make it perfectly horizontal so that this point and this point aligns perfectly. And as with any other line, what we do is to go to constraints. We select horizontal vertical and then we simply press the line and voila. Now this point is perfectly aligned with this one and the sketch as a whole is fully constrained and all of the lines are in black. The next thing we're going to do is to actually make this into a 3D model. And we're going to do that by first selecting finish sketch right here, like that, and taking a look at what we have. And we're going to use this profile to create our first 3D body. To do this, we're going to first select the extrude tool right here. Now, the extrude tool, it demands a profile for us to extrude from. And since we only have one profile here in the sketch, it has already pre-selected it for us. But if you would have multiple profiles, then this option would be empty and you would need to click select and then select the profile that you want to extrude. In our case, of course, it's this one. Now, with the profile selected, you can drag around a little bit on this arrow here and see what happens. Uh, of course, this is going to be a pretty thin little extrusion. So let's go ahead and go to the distance here and type in uh, something like four. That seems like a good and perfectly reasonable uh, distance for our extrusion. And then to confirm that, I just pressed enter. Okay, cool. And this is our first 3D body. Now we can rotate a bit and look around. And uh, yeah, looks pretty good. Okay, but this is no comb yet. Uh, we really need some teeth here. So let's go ahead and create some. Uh, to do this, we're going to go ahead and select the Create Sketch tool again. But instead of selecting one of the origin planes as we did before, we're going to select one of the planes of this 3D body that we have. We're going to select the top plane here. And what this does when we click it is to start a sketch and directly include all of the boundary lines of this 3D body. So we can directly incorporate those into our sketch. Now, like I said, we don't want to draw a bunch of T's here because that will take a lot of time and uh, frankly, it's unnecessary. So what we're going to do is we're going to create one perfect little uh, comp twos that we're then going to go ahead and replicate using the pattern tool. Now to create our one perfect twos here, we're going to go ahead and select the line tool. We're going to zoom in a little bit on the front here by using the scroll wheel. And then we're going to use one of the lines already included in our sketch by starting from this plane and select the corner right here. That is the starting point of the line. We're going to move ahead a little bit up, select the end point of the line. Uh, select a width here and then move down back to that starting line that we went from. Now you see that when we place these lines, Fusion 360 gave us a bunch of constraints, these orthogonality constraints, which really mean that these lines are always 90 degrees to each other. In our case, these are actually quite useful, so we're just going to let them uh, be there for now. Now, as you can see, this is a quite uh, ugly and short little stubby uh, comb tooth here. So we're going to make it uh, thinner by first going to the dimension tool and selecting the top line right here. Let's put down some reasonable number there, like um, two millimeters, like that. Now, from here, let's go ahead and make it a little bit longer as well, because now it's way too short. As before, I don't just want to make it any length. I want this edge here to align perfectly with this upper uh, point right there. Now, to do that, we could go ahead and do the same thing we did last time. So select a line, uh, put the line between this point and this point, and then make the line horizontal, right? 
There's actually a quicker way to do this that is a little bit less intuitive. We're going to go ahead and select the vertical horizontal constraint tool in this uh, constraints panel right here. And then we're going to pick this point here. And after that, we're simply going to pick the top point, uh, one of the top points of this uh, tubes here. And bam, suddenly this point is perfectly aligned with this one. And the reason why I say this is a little bit less intuitive is because why does this horizontal vertical tool perform that function? Shouldn't that rather be a coincident tool or something like the tangential tool? For me personally, I think that's a little bit strange, but that's the way fusion works. And uh, if you know this uh, little secret here, it will save you a lot of time from not having to put down a line like we did last time. Now uh, we have this one profile here and we're going to again select the extrude tool. And this time it doesn't select the profile automatically because now we could actually select many different things in the sketch. But we're going to go ahead and select this one by clicking it. And then uh, instead of typing out a distance, we're going to go and select a plane until which this extrusion is going to go. So we zoom out a little bit like that. We pan around the model and look at what is happening here. So this tooth here, we want it to go to this plane right here. To do that, we're going to select Extent to Object and then select this plane. And another thing we're going to do is to modify this operation here. Because extrusion can do many things. It can join bodies, it can cut through bodies, it can create new bodies and even new components. This time what we're going to do is to create a new body like that. And we're going to press OK. Now the difference between the join command is that we now have two different 3D bodies in our sketch. And a way we can see this is by pressing the arrow here on bodies and seeing the two bodies we have. And we can also switch the visibility of those bodies by pressing this light bulb here. Now we see that body 2 is this 2 that we created. The reason for which we created a body instead of using the join command is so that we can make a couple of more modifications to this 2 here before going ahead and uh, multiplying it. So what we want to do is to make this top a little bit smoother because as it is now, if we zoom in here, we see that this is going to be a little bit rough on the scalp, right? This is going to scratch us. So we want to create a little bit of a softness here. And we're going to do that by using the fillet command. The fillet command is a command that you're going to be using a lot in Fusion 360. And it's really a type of detailing command that is uh, used to put on uh, final touches for the most part. And this is why I recommend using it towards the end of your 3D modeling, as opposed to in the beginning of it. So let's go ahead and select the fillet command here in tools. And then we're going to select the edges that we want to make softer. Uh, so again, we pan around a little bit to get a better viewing angle. We select both of those uh, two edges and we put in a value for how much roundness we want. Okay, that looks pretty good. What happens if we select a little bit less than one? So we can type in 0.7, for example. Uh, I think this looks good. So let's go ahead and select OK. And uh, like that, we now have our perfect little twos here. Like I said, if we were just to do this manually uh, for maybe 20 or 30 times, it would be a huge hassle and waste of time. What we're going to do instead is to use a pattern tool. Now there's a couple of different types of patterns in Fusion 360. And the one that we're going to be using is called the Rectangular Pattern Tool, which creates uh, patterns along straight lines. Now we want to think a little bit about what we are creating a pattern of. So we could be creating a pattern of faces, bodies, or features, or even components. But in our case, like I said before, we have created an extra body here. So let's go ahead and select bodies. Now we're going to select the body that we want to pattern which is the little perfect twos here. And after that, we're going to select the direction in which we want to create this uh, line of T's. And to do that, we first select direction. And then we should select some kind of line or geometry that goes in the direction that we want. And uh, we could either select the origin axis right here in red, or we can even select this edge right here, which also goes in the direction that we want. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to go ahead and select this edge here. 
Okay, so nothing has happened yet because now we need to define uh, the distance type here. Uh, for the distance type, let's put spacing. So that means that instead of saying how long this pattern should be in total, we are actually telling it the spacing between each pattern instance. So the spacing between each twos in our case. Let's put in um, five as a starter. And uh, we see that something is happening here. First off, there's just way too few t's here. And the second thing is that they are going in the wrong direction. So let's fix both of those. Uh, for fixing the direction of the t's, we're actually going to go ahead and go to distance again. And instead of writing 5, we're going to write minus 5. And that means that the t's will go in the opposite direction. And we're going to go ahead and increase this other number to, let's say, 15. Okay, we want this t's to go all the way here. So we're just going to keep on toying with this number, let's say 17. 18, pan around a little bit. Basically what I'm trying to do is to get this last spacing to be the same as the one between each uh, twos. Yeah, this looks about right. This distance right here seems to be almost exactly the same like that one. And uh, we could make it exact, but for now, you know, it doesn't really matter. So let's just press OK here and we have our T's. A thing that you could note here is that in the bodies panel that uh, you can see by pressing the arrow here, we now have <laughs> a lot of bodies, right? Because for each twos, the pattern tool has now created one single body. And uh, for 3D printing, we really want to work with one body only. So what we're going to do is we're going to combine all of these. And the way we're going to do that is by using the combine tool. The combine tool can be found in the tools panel right here. Combine and it uh, requires us to first select the target body. So the target body is what all the other bodies are going to be joined to. In our case, I would like all of these small bodies here to be joined to the main body of the handle and the back side of the comb. So we're going to select this one here. And then we need to select all of the other bodies to be joined to that one. And we could do it uh, by clicking on them one by one. But that's a little bit slow, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a side view of the comb, like that. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to drag a rectangle up like this and cover all of the two bodies, like that. And I'm going to press OK. And now we're almost there. There's a couple of details I would like to fix though, because now we see we have this very sharp angle right there, we have this very sharp angle here, basically all of the corners of this comb, they're a little bit dangerous I think. So let's go ahead and smoothen them out with the fillet tool. We're gonna move up to the fillet tool here, and we're gonna hold the shift button and then the middle scroll wheel click to zoom around and select the edges that we want to smoothen out. And then finally, the edge right there. So four edges in total. And uh, yeah, let's zoom out and see what will look good here. So let's put three instead. Okay, that's much better. I actually like this look a lot. So let's stop right there and uh, click OK. And like that, we have a fully 3D printable product ready. And that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and send it to a 3D printer. We're going to go ahead and select 3D print in this file menu right here. We're going to select what we want to 3D print. So this body right here, the only one that we have. And then we select all of the options here. So refinement high, uh, send to 3D printer utility. And the 3D printer utility, in my case, it's uh, Cura. So we select OK. And suddenly, bam, we have the model appear inside of Ultimaker Cura. With that, I really hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned a lot. And I also hope that you saw that it's really not that difficult to create things in Fusion 360. Even though there's many different types of tools that you could be using, you get very far with only knowing a few of them. In upcoming lessons, we're going to do more of these types of follow-alongs. And we're going to do some more complicated stuff so that you get to use more of these tools and learn how to work with them. And uh, I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye. Ah. <sighs>
Perfect.